security requirement for neutrality. This is according to Ofsted. When it comes to teaching children about sex, sexual orientation, and gender reassignment, some schools are confusing their legal obligations with the moral and the political, the watchdog has said. Dr. Bernard Trafford is education commentator and a retired head teacher. Uh, what do you think is going wrong, Dr. Trafford, in the teaching of these subjects? Good morning. Oh, good morning. I should think just about everything's going wrong. Um, I mean, this is, seems to be presented as, as a problem and a scandal. Education is political. You know, unless we only stick to Julius Caesar and Pythagoras, um, you know, we're in any history, social, sex and relationships, education and so on, it's going to stray into the political. It's about society and helping prepare children to, to grow into adults ready to take their place in society. And so um, the more politicised the discussion about gender, sex, relationships and all that becomes, the more um, schools are tiptoeing into mm. dangerous territory. I mean, you can't help it. That's what the territory is. The, the, the campaigners around this are accusing some teachers of misinterpreting these, these equality regulations by, uh, they say, allowing female pupils who say that they identify as boys to use a different name. Those new names being used in class and on registers and official communications from the school. The school is allowing that. Do you think that if, if you were still a head teacher, would you allow that to happen in your school? I rather think I would. Uh, why make the gender thing, uh, uh, you know, and children uh, struggling with with their sense of gender and identity, why make that a battlefield? They're mm. trying to educate these children. I said, no, I'm telling what, telling you what you are. I mean, what do you do? You support the individual. <laughs> no, in, fact, in all education, in all schools, From education what settings. From what age? Um, I mean, it's uh, easy to see it's for, for older people, I think if you get into teenagers, it's yeah. rather difficult, but... Uh, uh, you know, a, a six-year-old saying, a six-year-old boy or girl saying, I feel like either a boy or a girl today, i.e. their change. Should that be, should that be allowed? Should that be tolerated? Should that be encouraged? Well, I, I mean, uh, for a long time now, um, uh, schools in, in everything sort of to do with the personal and sexual and so on, uh, I realise that's different from gender, mm -hmm. have had to make um, judgments as to how competent the child is to make that kind of judgment for him or herself. So. I would have said that's no different. It's about individuals. Schools spend their lives dealing with children as individuals, um, and even that would be with, you know, behaviour and difficulties, um, and they only have to sort of become institutional when, when um, trying to make allowances or whatever for, mm -hmm. the, for the particular individual then impacts on the institution. It's no use. Teachers, schools, going around saying, no, you can't say what you are. I mean, you just, just closing them out of their education. Would you expect a school, just fine, would you expect the school to teach children that there are two sexes? Biologically, two sexes, male and female. Would that be the grounding upon which education is, is then built on these matters? Um, well, I'd start there, but obviously even from the start you'd have to say and there are many hugely differing opinions on this. Now, I'm not going to get into the whole trans debate and I don't need all the hate mail uh, that comes in if people start laying down the law. But I wouldn't lay down the law because it's clearly an incredibly grey and difficult area. Um, and so you just tread with care. Schools mm. always do this. They've always done it. Politicians hate the idea of politicisation in any say, history teaching, um, just in case it disagrees with their view of history. And we're about to have huge arguments about empire and so on in education. Um, and, you know, what the effect of empire and co um, colonization, uh, uh, colonialism, I mean, has had mm -hmm. on our society. And thank God we're going to have it. It's creeping in. Um, and we have to go there. Schools go there. You can't just stay in the safe old stuff. All right. Dr. Bernard Trafford, I'll spare you the hate mail. Thank you very much indeed for your time. You're the educa education commentator and a retired head teacher. Very difficult one for, uh, for teachers to do this. But on, on those subjects where there is so much uh, controversy and difference of opinion, very, very hard. But the age appropriateness of some of the teaching is really, really important, I think, particularly with the younger the, the, the pupil is. Come to some of your thoughts on that. We'll talk more about the event at Wembley tonight, the game in front of 60,000 fans, whether you think it is the safe thing to do. Tom Swarbrick on LBC, 9.34, news headlines, Holly Harris. Heathrow Airport is hoping a trial of fast-track lanes for fully vaccinated arrivals 
will lead to an easing of government restrictions around international travel. The Transport Secretary is reportedly considering removing the quarantine rules for double jabs travellers returning from ambulist countries. Court orders aimed at stopping people as young as 12 from carrying knives are being tested in London. Anyone given an order could face a curfew, restrictions on their use of social media or a ban on travelling to certain parts of the city. And 60,000 fans will be at Wembley Stadium tonight to watch England take on Denmark in the Euro 2020 semi-final. If they win, they'll face Italy in the final after they beat Spain in their match last night. The weather, a rather cloudy start with showers, especially in the northeast and the southwest. The cloud breaking to allow some sunny spells this afternoon, but also a scattering of heavy, possibly thundery showers. A high of 22 Celsius. This is LBC. Your home is your sanctuary, your safe space. You retreat from the rest of this crazy world. You only let people into your home who you trust. Trust a trader. Understand this. That's why our tradespeople are all reliable, reputable, and recommended. And before you book someone, you can discuss the job with them and read their reviews, giving you the reassurance that you and your home are in safe hands. You can always trust a trader. Trust a trader. London. Let's get our COVID-19 vaccinations sorted. If you're 18 and over, you can book right now. Or if you're over 40, you could get fully vaccinated faster by bringing your second jab forward. Just visit nhs.uk slash COVID vaccination today. What a difference a day makes. The sooner, the safer. The Every vaccination gives us hope. Expedia presents a tribute to that special someone you never leave home without. Your bestie, BFF, your buddy old pal, brother from another mother or sister from another mister. Partner in crime, your ride or die. Whatever you call them, everywhere's better when you travel together. That's why, like a great companion, Expedia has your back throughout your journey with flexible options all in one app. Flexible options on selected hotels, terms apply, at all protected. So I saw Nervy Nigel playing golf, and I said, why so chilled? And he said, my car's in for a service. And I said, I thought you'd be hysterical. And he said, no, I bought my car direct from Cinch and got Cinch Care. Cinch Care, servicing lifetime warranty and breakdown assistance for under £35 a month. Total peace of mind for not a lot of, and he said, wedge. Exactly, Nigel. No, pass me a wedge. Which apparently is some type of golf bat. You're in the driving seat now, Britain. 